There's a topic in maths which is not only very common in exams, but also happens all the time in real life, and that is finding the upper and lower bound to certain numbers. You might be familiar with the phrase, to the nearest. That comes up a lot in, as I say, exam questions and real life. Find something to the nearest mile, round something to the nearest pound, that kind of thing. A typical question would be something like this. The width of a rectangle is 5 metres and its length is 4 metres, both to the nearest metre. Write down an upper bound for the area and a lower bound for the perimeter. First of all, let's focus on these numbers, 5 metres and 4 metres. And let's notice, first of all, we're trying to find the upper bound. Here's the question you have to ask yourself. What's the biggest that that number can become so that it would still round to 5 metres to the nearest metre? How big can we make it? I have a little tip for finding out what that is. And this is what I like to do. It said to the nearest metre, so let's write down 5 metres in the middle and a metre above that, which would be 6 metres, and a metre below that, which would be four metres. The reason we're writing a metre above and a metre below is because it's said to the nearest metre. And then simply look halfway between, whichever you're looking for. So we're looking for the upper bound. So we, we're looking on the higher end. And here's the borderline between five and six. That's like the ceiling. If you cross over that line, you're gonna round to six. And if we were going to find the lower bound, we draw the line down here. If we cross below this line, then it would round to 4 metres. What is the ceiling, though? It's halfway between 5 metres and 6 metres. That would be 5.5 metres. Now, some students say to me, well, 5.5 metres would actually round to 6 metres, so surely we can't use that for our upper bound. How about something like... 5.49. Well, 5.49 could still go even higher. It'd be 5.49999999, which essentially is the same as 5.5. I know 5.5 actually sometimes would round to 6, but basically we're just marking out the borderline. The borderline is 5.5, so that's our upper bound. Out of curiosity, what would our lower bound be? Some students would say 5 or 4.9 or something like that, but our lower bound would be halfway here, which would be 4.5 metres. Upper and lower bounds very often end in 0.5s and that kind of thing. Right, so now we're ready to find the upper bound for the area. Let's do, what would the upper bound for 4 metres be? We found the upper bound for 5 metres, that would be 5.5. What about the upper bound for 4 metres? Well, the upper bound for 4 metres, let's just, we've got the 4 metres already done over here, so we can do one above it, which is 5, one below it, which is 3, draw our border lines, this time in, let's do it in, say, blue, so we don't get confused from the previous one. There's the ceiling, there's the floor, so the upper bound for 4 metres is 4.5, same as the lower bound for 5, actually and its lower bound is 3.5 metres. There we have the bounds for 4 and for 5. So the upper bound for the area, we're going to use the upper bound for the width and the upper bound for the length. 5.5 times by 4.5. To get the area of a rectangle, you multiply the width by the height. And this would be a calculator question, so let's just use a calculator. 5.5 times by 4.5, which is 24.75. 24.75. The mistake that a lot of students, and that would be meters squared, the mistake that a lot of students make is that they don't round the actual numbers, they just multiply it and then round that. So for example, they'd use 5 times 4 to get 20, and then find the upper bound of 20 to the nearest metre, which would be 20.5. That's not how you do it. 
you round the numbers themselves and then just write down the answer. You don't round the answer as well. Let's find the lower bound for the perimeter. What's the lower bound for five meters? The lower bound for five meters is 4.5 meters. What's the lower bound for four meters? As we saw here, the floor for four meters is 3.5 meters. What is the perimeter again though? What, what does perimeter mean? Perimeter means all the way around the sides. So we have 3.5 on this side as well, the same as on the right hand side, and a 4.5 down here, same as the top, because it's a rectangle. Opposite sides are equal. Adding that all together, that would be 16 meters. 4.5 plus 4.5 is 9, 3.5 plus 3.5 is 7, and 9 plus 7 is 16 meters. So the lower bound for the perimeter equals 16 meters. Let's try one more quick question. Clear ourselves some space, and maybe not that much space. Okay, let's do the question on the right. Here we go. Paul weighs 61.4 kilograms to three significant figures. Write down the upper bound for his weight, the lower bound for his weight. Let's write that number out. 61.4. Now that's three significant figures. That basically means three numbers. So what's the next number up to three significant figures? Remember, that's my trick for upper bound and lower bound. See what the next number up is, the next number below. Well, think of it as like three numbers. Three significant figures is like three numbers, 614. So the next one up would be 615, 61.5. The next one below would be 61.3. Does that mean our upper bound is 61.5? No. Or our lower bound is not 61.3. It's halfway between. Remember, you always get halfway between. So let's draw our ceiling. Do it in red. And let's draw our floor. Do it in red. What's halfway between 61.4 and 61.5? That would be 61.45. 61.45. Remember my tip that it usually ends in a 5. It's almost like what's halfway between 61.40 and 61.50? It's 61.45. That's the upper bound. And the lower bound, halfway between 61.3, or in other words, 61.30, and 61.4, 61.40, it would be 61.35. To recap, to find the upper and lower bounds, when you get questions like, to the nearest meter, to the nearest five meters, or to the nearest three significant figures, etc., you write the number itself, one number above it, and one number below it. So if it was to the nearest five meters, you go five meters above, five meters below. To the nearest centimeter, you go one centimeter above, one centimeter below. Then halfway is your ceiling, and halfway is your floor.